You're watching Taste the Victory. Hey guys, it is time for one of the most unique deck profiles in this meta, Three Musketeers with the face of the deck being Bielstarmon, a really popular Digimon once people have started to find out it exists because of the TCG. Also, really quick, I always forget to say this, I'm actually doing this in post right now, but I have a TCG player sponsored link in the description below, so if you're gonna pick up singles for this deck, consider using the link in the description below to support me. Thank you so much. So this deck is really unique in this format because it's kind of like a purposely supported Mega Zoo. In previous formats, people have taken a bunch of Megas that have a kind of synergy and a bunch of level five sometimes as well, and put them all into a deck where you just hard cast big um, value, big um, memory for big value and titled it Mega Zoo. Now this is kind of like an official supported version of that known as Three Musketeers because a lot of this revolves on round hard casting and the gimmick of filling up your trash to reduce the cost of that hard cast. So let's go ahead and get into this profile and see exactly how that's going to work. This is a little weird of a uh, level curve we got going on here, so let me turn on stats for you guys, but I think we're still gonna still going to start at the traditional um, babies and make our way up. First up for our babies, the priority is three Debbie Miramon, on deletion trigger draw one, and then uh, trash one card in your hand. So this is cool with your rookies because your rookies are kind of more of a means to an end. Rather than um, digivolving up from your rookies to a mega, they are more of a utility to help fuel your mega's gimmick in this deck. So you're, a lot of the times, once they've done their job, you're just going to bum rush them into security and hope they um, get deleted for their on deletion effects. So Demi Miramon helps proc that. We do, however, have quite a decent amount of options that trash uh, our own cards from our hand, which is why we run two Sunomon, which is a new baby introduced in this booster set 6. Sunomon says, your turn, once per turn, when you trash a card from your hand using one of your effects, trigger, draw one. So something like a... Um, Labramon now becomes a plus one instead of just replacing the card you uh, discarded uh, off of its effect thanks to Sunomon. So that is cool because both of these eggs offer a lot of synergy for the discarding of this deck and help us not only draw into our win cons but also set up the conditions to meet for those win cons. Next up we got our rookies which we are still running 13 of because going first while this deck does not focus entirely on um, digivolving up traditionally Having that first turn draw is really important, really helps you um, cycle throughout the deck for your game and keep up with your opponent. So we would still like to see it, but if we don't see it, it's not the end of the world because of tools that we will get to in a second. First up, we got Impmon. This is introduced to us all the way back in Booster Set 1.0 for English. It is three to play, zero Digivolve, only 1000 DP, and on deletion, trash the top three cards of your deck. So that is a huge number to trash. What we're trying to do is get our Musketeer type Digimon and our level our seven cost options into the trash, and hitting three off of this deletion is huge and gives us really good odds of getting what we want in the trash in there. Paired with our, our eggs, there's uh, a lot of cycling, but Impmon's great for that. Next up, we got the one of Gazimon. You can definitely up this to two, uh, just so you make sure you actually see this kind of tech. But yeah, it's three to play, 2000 DP, zero Digivolve, and then all turns, your opponent can't gain memory except with Tamer effects. So this card is amazing against blue because of that Hammer Spark. Uh, this card is fantastic against uh, those red strategies because a lot of people will um, be running the memory boost and they'll also be running, uh, some really crazy people might be running that Gravity Crush card, so shuts down uh, Blinding Red and Yellow. Fantastic tech card, it probably always will be. Feel free to run this up to two at the cost of one of your other rookies. Next up, we got Soundbird Mon. Three to play, zero to 12 into 1000 DP, and then when attacking, you may trash one option card in your hand to gain one memory. This card is amazing, and you could definitely play with your other rookie ratios to up this one instead, because it specifically gets rid of your options, so you will always be able to uh, trash our options to fuel uh, Bielsarmon's effect, and then you gain one memory for it, so it can help facilitate plays that you uh, may be one memory off of. 1000 DP means it's almost always going to die, so that'll prop your uh, Demi Miramon, and it's great for that effect to help build up your trash. Next up, we got Labramon, three to play, 2000 DP, zero to evolve, and then on play, trigger, draw one, then trash one card in your hand. Similar to uh, cards we've seen before, this helps you cycle through your deck while also filling up your trash to meet the condition of Bielstarmon. This is a fantastic uh, Labramon. And with how often you are typically hard casting this deck anyways, the hard cast for three uh, is not something that's felt too painful in this deck. It's pretty good. Next up, we got Impmon, and this is a new one introduced in this set. It's a great one for helping recycle your resources. It's three to play, 2000 DP, and then on play, you may trash one card in your hand. If you do, return one to one card with seven great demon lords or three musketeers that is site from your trash to your hand. So with this, you're practically running eight um, Bielstarmon or double of any of the other three musketeers that you are running. It is great to help you recycle in the grind game and keep you in the game so you don't run out of Bielstarmons to keep uh, shuffling it over and over to use its effect. 
when you grab one of the three musketeers out of the trash you are reducing you know the cost uh that is being reducted from the digimon but with this ability to trash one card in your hand you could also trash some musketeer that you're not using or an option card and basically keep it even to where it was before so Inmon has a lot of utility to help you grind you now and it's fantastic for that and then also with this you don't have to worry about trashing your musketeers early game if it comes to it you don't have to like hold on to them because this guy offers a way to get them back late game if you want to play that aggressive next up we got our champion lineup so this is where it ends i don't believe we're running any ultimates at all from what i remember my playtesting we're starting with the tech choice first off which is mechanorimon it is a blocker, 6,000 DP, only 4 to hard cast, which is why it makes it a great text uh, since we don't have to worry about Digivolving. 3 to Digivolve into, blocker, your turn, this Digimon can't attack, and an opponent's turn, when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, unsuspended. So that's like a hard counter to Rookie Rush. Rookie Rush has uh, ways around this easily, you know, like with the uh, Spiral Masquerade, but if they don't see into that out, this like shuts down their turn until they can get rid of it and draw into their outs. It is only four to play, so that is great, so you don't have to worry. As you notice, we are not running any black rookies. We don't need to worry about that because we're most of the time going to be hard casting it. Gives us an option to play um, uh, Joel Schwarmer if we don't have any of the other Musketeers that let us play it out early. So uh, lots of utility and helps on your matchups there that will otherwise rush you down. Because the thing with um, the L Star Mon 3 Musketeers decks is they do require a, quite a bit of setup. So a lot of decks like Rookie Rush can rush you down pretty quickly, uh, Just Mon as well, you know. So this helps that a little bit um, by your early game, a little bit more by letting you have that blocker wall up against them. Feel free to up that too if you want to play with the ratios. But one ratio I would recommend not playing with would be Deputy Mon. It is only 5 to play, which is great for a champion, 4,000 DP, 2 to Digivolve into, and then on play, reveal the top 4 cards of your deck. Add one Digimon card with 3 Musketeers in its type, and or one option card with a memory cost of 7 among them to your hand and trash the remaining cards. Your turn, this Digimon can Digivolve into a Digimon card with 3 Musketeers in its type from your hand for a memory cost of 6, ignoring its Digivolution requirements. So this bad boy is why we're not running any ultimates. If you have them out, you can straight up Digivolve into uh, Gundramon for only for six. I said only six, which is a lot, but like to skip an entire level, that's fantastic. So that, and being a blocker, once you go um, into Gundramon, he immediately pays for himself by putting value on board and pressure on your opponent by deterring attacks with a beefy 11,000 DP blocker. Deputy Mon is also great for being a searcher. Uh, because of that, you get to not only get your three musketeers, but you also get to your level seven options. So that really helps fuel up your hand for your discarding effects, or if you bricked for a follow-up play at all, you know? So Deputy Mon is a fantastic backbone to this deck and definitely should be run at four. After that, we got some more standard purple option with our two cost blockers. As I said earlier, with the decks that rush you down are kind of a hard matchup. So we do want those blockers to be able to um, in case we don't see what we need, be able to stay on board for a while. We are running the 2000-6000 DP ones because we want to avoid removal and avoid trading with our opponent's Digimon since we want these guys to stay around as long as we are setting up. And since this isn't a rush to the traditional level curve, the two cost doesn't hurt you as much. Next up, we got another card introduced this set. Really fun tech option here. 6000 to play, 6000 DP, 2 to Digivolve from a level 3, and 1 uh, to Digivolve from a level 4. So, this guy has Rush, and then on play, you may place one uh, Kinkakumon. So, you can read the effect there, but that um, effect is not relevant to this deck at all. We do not run the Kinkakumon or Jinkakumon to actually activate that effect. That's more of a Lilith loop thing, which we will get to a profile eventually. What we run this for is simply for that Rush. As you see here, we have the option Nailbone, so Nailbone will be able to play this out as one of our targets. Uh, with um, Bielstarmon be able to play that out for free, and this thing having Rush, there's many situations where this could lead to being the lethal swing you needed for that turn. And Mechanorimon is a cheeky tech for that. Uh, if you want to play with this ratio, however, of any of the numbers, uh, uh, rather, <laughs> Jikakumon uh, could be one of those ones to play around with. After him, we completely skip the ultimate lineup. As you can see here, we got zero, and we go straight to our level sixes, starting up with Machine Dramon. Or rather, Gun Dramon, sorry. <laughs> Gundramon, the most American Digimon, is 11 to play, 4 to Digivolve into, 11,000 DP, he has Blocker, and then when Digivolving, you reveal the top 5 cards of your deck. You may use one option card with memory cost of 7 among them without paying its memory cost. Trash the remaining cards if, uh, trash the remaining cards. If you don't use an option card with this effect, delete one of your opponent's Gundramon with a play cost of 4 or less. This is awesome, because when Digivolving, as uh, said, helps uh, synergize with the warp that you get off of Deputy Mon, 
potentially helps you come back with a free option, uh, clearing a big threat with Fly Bullet or clearing their uh, swarm board with a Jawar Swarmer. And if you, if you don't hit it, you get to destroy the level four. So if they had like a blocker out or something, that is now gone. That blocker, if you're able to get it out, it really helps you too by deteriorating swings or trading with a big threat and makes a, your opponent in a hard spot. So then we get to the very face of the deck. We got Biel Star. This is going to be one of the most popular cards in this meta for many reasons. But let's get to the reason for its effect. 12 to play cost, 3 to Digivolve into, 11,000 DP, and then when playing this card from your hand, reduces play cost for each 3 Musketeers, Digimon card, and option card with memory cost of 7 in your trash. On play, return 1 option card with memory cost of 7 from your trash to your hand, then use 1 option card with memory cost of 7 in your hand without paying its memory cost. So, not only can this Digimon get incredibly cheap, like you can get so much stuff in your trash that eventually this card would be played for um, like 2 costs, 3 costs, very very easy to hit that. But not only that, you also get to play a huge impactful option for free off of it as long as it costs 7, which everything we were running does. <laughs> And all these options are amazing tools to control your opponent's board. So BL Star Mon be able to recycle itself with Ipmon, be able to recycle an option, be able to play itself is so cheap. It's incredible pressure that breaks the level curve and puts so much pressure on your opponent if they can't out it right away. You uh, late game, you are set. If you survive into the late game, you are really hard to lose. Like you are very much in a good position to keep pressuring your opponent by recycling this Digimon and its effects that it has throughout its deck. Biel Sarmon is crazy threatening. That's why we run four of it, guaranteed never any less. That covers the core of our Digimon. Now let's get to the level sevens. First off, we got Millenniumon. This guy has been taking a back seat to the hype that is Swart and Swart Defeat. He's been getting cut from a lot of purple and blacklist, but Millenniumon still has a ton of utility, which is why rather than going all in on four Swarts in this deck, we are running two, two split here with Millenniumon. He is a level seven that is six to Digivolve into 13,000 DP, and the reason we're running him, when Digivolving, return one of your opponent's Digimon to the bottom of their deck, trash all the Digivolution cards of that Digimon. On deletion, if this card had Digivolution cards, you may play this card for your trash without paying its memory cost. The ability to have non-targeting, non-destructive removal that sends to the bottom of the deck is really big in this meta and going forward. The thing with this is, like, it's really great in the mirror because you have, like, Beelzemon, rather than uh, returning it to trash to fuel up another one, or to be able to search it out by another Impmon, you can bottom deck it here. Uh, same with Eosmon, same with a lot of Digimon strategies in this meta. So Millenniumon's a really great target to be able to get rid of that. Also, in mirrors or in general, when your opponent has a level 7, it is very hard for you to remove it because if we look at all of our removal, it's pretty situational like Trump Sword or uh, limited by level or something other like that. So to have a completely free target to be able to actually get rid of our uh, opponent's level 7s gives us a lot more utility, a lot more options, and gives us a lot more hope to actually draw into something that can remove that level 7. Because otherwise it's really hard for um, three, 3 Musketeers to start coming back from that pressure your opponent has placed on you once they've got them to their level 7. Which is why you should not sleep on Millennium on this meta. Next up we got Sw Omnimon Swart. Everyone knows this one after how crazy hyped he was in BT5. We got uh, Digivolve for 6, 15,000 DP. When Digivolving, trash, trash the top 3 cards of your deck, which plays well into making your next Beelzemon even cheaper. Then you may play up to 2 Black or Purple Digimon cards that has a play cost of 8 or less from your trash without paying their memory cost. Again, this is another way for us to play out the um, uh, Jinkakumon Promote, which has Rush and Conceal games if you like Digivolve into this guy without passing somehow. And also just helps you like maybe put out a blocker, helps you put on uh, more pressure on board to seal the game next turn. And then when attacking, you may return one level 6 Digimon card for this Digimon to Devolution cards to your hand to delete one of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon that has a play cost of 12 or less. So this helps you remove your opponent's level 6s ideally and helps you recycle uh, Beelzemon, which is why it's also a good level 7 to pair in this deck alongside Millenniumon. And really, which one you want to go all in on is up to your personal preference. I'm just using Millenniumon for the reasons stated previously. You can even have, uh, here's a tech section right here, tech. You can even uh, make argument to run Magna Kidmon, which is also a 3 Musketeer, and then run Millenniumon, because you have some deep digivolving you could do, and uh, which uh, messes up Jessmon in particular, since it relies on its inheritables a lot. And also a lot of decks, like uh, Gabu Bond right now, um, Gabu Bond, a lot of his stuff will be destroyed, because they're like base, base Rookie Rush by um, Alter S. And you will run this Magna Kid to uh, be able to do all Alter S over it. If you do this, I probably wouldn't run more than one Alter S um, just to not brick on it since oh, Magna Kid is your only. Well, also, you can do all over Gundramon since it's also red and black. But yeah, that's just uh, more targets to um, 
if you would decide to run the Ultra S. It's definitely a decent meta call that, you should, if you're considering it, should definitely try it out. After that, we run to our options, which fuel Beelzebub's ability to reduce its play cost. We got Geralt Schwarmer, Geralt Schwarmer, which is Guntramon's option. Seven costs, like all these other ones will be. If you have a Digimon with three Musketeers in its type in play, you may use this option card without meeting its color requirements, which is the amazing thing about all the three Musketeers' options. Then main, main delete all Digimon with play costs of seven or less. So be careful. Keep in mind this also uh, deletes your side of the board seven or less. So you if you have a bunch of rookies and you're able to swing, make sure you swing with them before casting this option. And then a security effect adds owners to his hand. So this is great for the rookie rush matchup. It's great for coming back from a board that's gotten too wide while you spend time building up your trash for Beelzebub or any of the other musketeers. And then we got Trump Sword, just good old fashioned purple removal. Main delete one of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon. So that is kind of uh, hurts when you uh, reveal this in security and their only target is already rested because they swung with the stack they went all in on. That's kind of annoying thing about Trump Sword, but it is still good removal. A lot of opponents uh, may play around your other options rather than this one and, uh, and leave themselves open to this. That's definitely great just for that 7 cost to have. Then we got Flight Bullet. This is a new option introduced for Beelzebub in this set, or Beelstarmon. I hope I haven't been saying Beelzebub in all video. <laughs> if you have a uh, 7 cost, if you have a Digimon with 3 Musketeers, so same thing, uh, you can play it without meeting the requirements. And then main, delete one of your opponent's level 6 or lower Digimon. So this goes back to what I was talking about, where we don't really have too many outs to level 7s and uh, level 7 Digimon. That becomes kind of rough. But uh, otherwise, this is great removal that... Um, Black, or rather purple, has been wishing it had the entire game up until this set, you know, because uh, their equivalent of Gaia Force and Trump's War was pretty conditional. This one is now a little more lenient. And then activate this card's main effect, which is fantastic. Always love to see that in security. Then we got Nailbone. This is from the purple starter deck. It is also 7 cost, and you may play one purple level 3 Digimon card and one purple level 4 Digimon card for your trash without paying the memory cost. Any on play effects on Digimon don't activate. So, said earlier, you combo this with uh, Beelzebub and they get King Kakumon promote out for free and hope to end the game with Rush. And a security effect is you play a level 4 or lower Digimon again uh, on place on activate. So, this helps you establish board presence about against decks that are more aggressive with clearing your board, like security control. Finally, we got Magnet Kidmon's option, Happy Bullet Showering. If you have a Digimon, you know, the same thing. Uh, you don't have to meet the color requirements, you have a 3 month tier, and then main, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP. So, Rookie Rush, this will mess them up a lot if they have uh, hardcasted a bunch of level 3, or rather 2 cost, 3 cost Digimon. Or even if your opponent has like 2 Digimon that are 10 cost out, you know, they are both still technically, and that's all they have out, that's technically still the lowest, both of them are the lowest Digimon with DP. So you can wipe their board that way as well. So just more, you know, options to um, uh, use it if you have a three musketeer out. And if not, it is perfect fodder to delete uh, or to trash into your security for Bale Star Moth effect. And finally, we're going to end this off with our tamers. We have a uh, three here with a two one split. First, let's start off with Matt. He's a memory tamer that guarantees you three or more. And then he has on play return on purple Digimon card or option from your hand. So this could grab you an option you may need to use in a pinch, or this could grab you one more uh, BL Starmon. We have so many ways to recycle her uh, between this and all the other Digimon's tamers. And then uh, our bigger priority here is Sora and Mimi. Start of your turn, if your opponent doesn't have a level 4 or lower Digimon, gain 2 memory. So that effect uh, does kind of handicap you in certain matchups, like uh, um, against Rookie Rush, against some of the Bonds. But your turn, when one, of your opponent, uh, when one of your purple Digimon attacks, you may suspend this Tamer to trigger draw 1, then trash 1 in your hand. So again, it's another way to cycle through your deck and get closer to your pieces while also filling up your trash. I like having all these effects that um, basically do that to help you search more and more. From security, it plays yourself. So this really becomes a, man, a matchup dependent tamer because like, again, like I said, against Rookie Rush, it can really uh, mess you up. But again, a bunch of other decks, uh, they will be hard casting, uh, or not, yeah, like hard casting like champions and up and digivolving uh, over them, um, giving you the guaranteed memory off of this. Well, not guaranteed, but you know what I mean? But definitely this uh, will depend on your locals because with things like Jessmon running around, hard casting level threes for free, uh, like Sister Ron Blanc, I believe, uh, that gives you a harder, harder chance for this to go off, like less of a chance to go off. So you can definitely play with this ratio uh, between Matt and Mimi, and it's up to you. Personally, I prefer it more for its second effect to be able to um, fill up my trash and draw close to my pieces because we're going to be hard casting a lot of time in this deck anyways. But if you value the more recyclability of uh, the Elstar Mon and Guaranteed Memory, you could run Matt. So that is going to be this deck. It is a really fun deck that breaks the traditional level curve. But you know, don't let people tell you like, oh, this deck is uh, breaking the game. Um, you are uh, disrespecting the spirit of the game, lame for playing it. Because this deck has to work to get up to breaking the level curve. You know, you have to grind through your deck. 
to trash all those pieces and then uh, manage those resources well. You know, did I discard the wrong card? Uh, should this have been in my trash when I held it in hand and now I can't play it off the All-Star? All that. It is a very fun deck that has very creative gameplay uh, branching paths, uh, deck building paths. It's amazing. This is only one suggestion. There's many more ways to build this deck. I would love to hear what you guys uh, think of it. How are you building? And I'm really looking forward to playing this uh, with friends and stuff. It's a really cool deck. I will see you in the next video and hope you enjoyed this one. And until that next video, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.